Charles Salk. Here's a nice picture of a hot air balloon. I remember as a kid thinking, man, how on earth did this that work? I mean, I understood helium balloons somehow, but a hot air balloon, it's got a big hole in the bottom, right? And yet it goes up. What? Hot air balloons have a big old, usually a propane burner here. Big flame, and they heat the air. When you heat air, it expands. When it expands, its density changes. Density is the mass of something divided by its volume. The mass of air doesn't change. The mass of the particles doesn't change. But when you separate them, when it expands, the volume gets larger. So if the mass stays the same and the volume gets bigger, the density goes down. So the balloon will rise because the air is hot. If you run out of gas and the air cools down, the balloon's going to come back down. If you want to come back down, you just let the air cool down a little bit and you'll come down. So heating the gas at, at uh, constant pressure increases the volume of the gas. And the lower density gas floats on the higher density ga gas, the air, just like wood floats in water or oil floats on water. It's a, a difference in density. So volume changes with temperature. When the volume increases, the temperature increases. So here's a graph of the volume of a gas versus its temperature in degrees Celsius. So here we've got, I don't know what that is, maybe 10? 10. 10 degrees Celsius, and it's occupying a volume of about mm, 22 liters. And we increase the temperature, and the gas gets larger and larger and larger. We graph it, we see it's a line. Very nice. When we extrapolate the line until we hit zero on the y-axis, we find that this is at minus 273 degrees Celsius. This predicts that a gas should have zero volume at minus 273. Could you have a negative volume? No. It's just not really possible, is it? My, my computer has a mind of its own since I upgraded to Windows 10. Yes, thank you. I haven't figured out how to turn that off yet. So negative volume is impossible. So that means that minus 273 is the lowest possible temperature. So we call that absolute zero. That's the lowest you can go. Um, let's see, what's, you know, I'll just put it up here. So I mentioned earlier the equation of a line, right? Y equals mx plus b. Um, things get much simpler if b is zero, because then you just have y equals mx, and everything gets easier. So what we're going to find is that we're going to use, um, if we use the Kelvin temperature, um, instead of the Celsius temperature, then our intercept is zero. And so that's just so much better. So Charles was a French mathematician and physicist in 1746 to 1823. By the way, I am not going to test you on these guys' names or which law belongs to whom, because I think it's nice to talk about it, but I don't think that's worth memory space in your brain. So... Um, he looked at the relationship between the volume of a gas and its temperature. So what we call Charles' law is that the volume of a gas and its Kelvin temperature are directly proportional. The volume is directly proportional to the temperature. If one goes up, the other goes up. If one goes down, the other goes down. Another way to write this is like this. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So we see that when the temperature in kelvins is doubled, its volume doubles. 
you have to use Kelvins. And that's because of the relationship between the Kelvin and Celsius scale. It's an additive one. Kelvin is Celsius plus 273. It doesn't cancel out. If you don't understand why that is, that's fine. Just remember, you have to use Kelvins. And I'll try to say that enough that you won't forget, but some of you will still forget. You have to use Kelvins. It just doesn't work if you don't. The reason we use Kelvins is because of the equation of the line thing. When we use the Kelvin scale, this B becomes zero. Everything's easier. Kinetic molecular theory explains this one as well. If the temperature of a gas sample is increased, kinetic molecular theory says that the gas particles move faster. The gas sample, the gas particles move faster. If the pressure is going to stay the same, then the volume has to increase. So when you heat it up, if it's the same pressure, it's going to get larger. Now, if you're restricting the volume and not letting the pressure be the same, other things are going to happen. But Charles' law assumes that we're keeping the pressure and the amount of gas the same. This is something you could try at home. Blow up a balloon, not too big, not too small. Stick it in some ice water. It's going to shrink. That's a demonstration of Charles' law. Cold temperature, lower temperature, volume gets smaller. Take it out of the ice water, put it in some boiling water. Watch it magically grow. Higher temperature, volume increases. The pressure inside the balloon is roughly the same, but the temperature has changed. So let's do a problem. A sample of gas has a volume of 2.80 liters at an unknown temperature. When the sample is submerged in ice water at zero degrees Celsius, its volume decreases to 2.57 liters. What was its initial temperature in Kelvins and in Celsius? Read through it, even if it doesn't make sense the first time. Make a table. One and two. Go back and harvest numbers. So I go along and go along. There's a number. Write it down. 2.80 liters. Liter is a measurement of what? Volume. volume. It also says volume of. That's a volume, so I'm going to call this column V. It's just the first one I came across. Let's go to the next number. Zero degrees Celsius. Well, that's a temperature. Does this number go with that number? No, it doesn't. 2.8 liters at an unknown temperature. So this guy's kind of by himself right now. And then when the sample is submerged, this is what we're doing to it. We're changing something. This is the new temperature, and the volume decreases to this. These two go together. So we're going to put those in the second row because there's not enough room for them in the first row. So my zero degrees Celsius is going to be down here, and my 2.57 liters. So this is my temperature. What do I need to do to the temperature? I need to convert it to Kelvin. So you should just do it right away. You convert to Kelvin by adding 273. So that's 273 Kelvin. And I need to make my table a little bigger. That's OK. I can do that. And that's temperature. I already wrote that. Now I've got my table full except for one blank. I'm going to go look and see what are they asking me for. What was the initial temperature? What is this unknown temperature? So that's going to be T1. So the equation is Charles' law, and that's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. 
Would this equation work if I put in T2 equals zero? No, it would be undefined. You can't divide by zero. You just, you can't use Celsius. You can't, ever, for gas laws. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find T1. Lots of mistakes when people rearrange this equation for T1. Fractions mess people up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the fraction first. It's not the fastest way, but it's only a little bit longer, and it'll get you the right answer. If you can do it otherwise, feel free. But we're going to get rid of the fraction in here because it's confusing. So we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to take the T1 times the V2, and that's going to equal the V1 times the T2. So T1 V2 equals V1 T2. This is easier to rearrange. So I cross multiply to get rid of the fractions in the equation. So I'm going to solve for T1. That means I need to divide by V2 to cancel that out. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. And so I end up with T1 equals V1 times T2 divided by V2. Especially on an exam, take a second and make sure you copied it right. Then I'm going to plug in my numbers. Volume 1 was 2.80 liters. Temperature 2 was 273 Kelvin. Volume 2 was 2.57 liters. The liters cancel out. 2.8 times 273 divided by 2.57. 297.43 Kelvin, um, three significant figures. That's one answer. It wants Celsius. How do I convert that to Celsius? Subtract 273. So minus 273, that's equal to 24 degrees Celsius. You can, you can try doing this with the temperature in Celsius, and you'll find out you do not get that answer. We'll do this one later.